Okay, let's jump right in. We've got some uh, really exciting news today from the world of science. Yes, it sounds like a potentially major step forward, something significant in the, well, the very long fight against HIV. It really does. And that's what we want to unpack in this deep dive today. Right. We're looking at a scientific development that's been hitting the news. Mm -hmm. Our info is coming from reporting by India Today and, you know, their associated outlets dated June 6th, 2025 mm -hmm. and they're detailing a new technique one that might just might hold the key to an actual hiv cure which is i mean the ultimate goal researchers have been chasing for decades exactly so we'll explore the huge challenge here why hiv is so tricky and then get into this uh really novel approach it actually uses technology you might recognize from the covid 19 vaccines right that's the one it's a fascinating example isn't it how tools developed for one crisis can potentially help with another completely different one. It really is, shows how interconnected scientific progress can be sometimes. Okay, so let's set the scene first. What is the core problem? The report lays it out, maybe you can elaborate. Why has curing HIV been so, well, so hard? Right. The fundamental issue, the reason we don't have a cure yet, boils down to the virus's ability to hide. It's incredibly stealthy. It doesn't just float around in the blood. Not entirely. While it does circulate, HIV has this knack for integrating its own genetic code right into the DNA of our own cells, specifically certain types of white blood cells. Ah, so it actually becomes part of the cell's blueprint, almost. You got it. And once it's in there, especially in these particular long-living white blood cells, it can just go quiet, go dormant. It stops actively making copies of itself. It just hides out. Exactly. And these hidden pockets of infected dormant cells are what scientists call reservoirs. Reservoirs, right. And the report stresses that because they're hiding like this, they're essentially invisible. Like the body's own immune system can't find them. Precisely. The immune system is geared to fight active threats, things it can see, a virus that's basically switched off inside our own cells. It flies under the radar. And this isn't just a problem for our immune system, right? Even the modern drugs. Yeah, the antiretroviral therapies, or RT, are fantastic. Right. They suppress the virus in the bloodstream down to undetectable levels. People can live long, healthy lives. It's a huge medical success story. But, but even these powerful drugs struggle to get at the virus tucked away inside these reservoirs. They can't fully eliminate it. Okay, so the current treatment is about control, not eradication. It keeps the virus suppressed, but those reservoirs remain. That's the crux of it. And that's why treatment is lifelong. If someone stops taking their RD, the virus can emerge from these hiding places, these reservoirs, and start replicating again. So a true cure means getting rid of the reservoirs, completely clearing them out. That's the challenge. Find a way to eliminate those hidden populations of virus-infected cells. That's the barrier we need to overcome. Okay, challenge clearly defined. Find the hidden virus, flush it out. Which brings us neatly to this new research coming out of Australia. Yes, this work is from the Peter Doherty Institute for Infection and Immunity in Melbourne. And their goal was exactly that, tackling the reservoir problem head on. Directly. They wanted to figure out a way to essentially lure or force this hidden dormant virus out of its hiding spots within the cells. And this is where the mRNA technology comes in, the same tech behind some of the big COVID vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna. That's right. It's a really clever application of the technology, actually. mRNA, messenger RNA, it's basically a set of instructions for cells. Like a recipe. Kind of, yeah. For the COVID vaccines, the instructions told our cells how to make a little piece of the virus spike protein so our immune system could learn to recognize it. Okay. So what instructions are they using here for HIV? Here, the idea is to send a different set of mRNA instructions, specifically targeted to those white blood cells where the HIV is hiding in the reservoirs. And the instructions tell the cells to do what? The mRNA instructs the cell machinery to uh, essentially wake up the dormant HIV that's integrated into its DNA to reactivate it. Like poking the sleeping bear. Huh, something like that. The goal is to force the virus out of its silent state, make it start producing viral components again, make it visible. I see. So it's not hiding anymore. It reveals itself. Exactly. And the theory is once the virus is active again, making proteins and trying to replicate, it becomes vulnerable. Vulnerable to what? The immune system. Potentially, yes. Either the body's own immune response could then target these newly revealed infected cells, or maybe it makes them susceptible to other drugs designed to kill cells producing HIV. Okay, that makes sense conceptually. But the report mentioned a big technical hurdle. 
Getting the mRNA into those specific reservoir cells wasn't simple. No, and this is really key to the breakthrough. mRNA is delicate stuff. It needs protection to get into cells. The standard delivery method, the one used for the vaccines, involves wrapping the mRNA in tiny fat bubbles. Lipid nanoparticles, right, LNPs. Exactly. Those LMPs work well for getting into many cell types, but these particular white blood cells, the ones forming the key HIV reservoirs, they were uh, resistant. They didn't readily take up those standard LMPs. So the delivery system wasn't working for the target cells. It's like having the right key, but for the wrong lock. Precisely. It doesn't matter how good your mRNA instructions are if you can't get them delivered to the right place. So the Milburn team couldn't just use the off-the-shelf LMP technology they had to innovate the delivery system itself. They did, and that's a huge part of the story. They engineered a new version of these lipid nanoparticles. And this new one is called LNPX. That's the one, LNPX. Its design allows it to efficiently get inside these specific previously resistant white blood cells. Okay, so LNPX is the key that does fit the lock on these reservoir cells. Correct. And crucially, once inside, it successfully delivered the mRNA payload, those instructions, to wake up the dormant HIV. So the breakthrough is twofold. The strategy of using mRNA to reactivate HIV and the creation of this novel LNPX delivery system capable of reaching the target cells. Absolutely. Without LNPX, the whole approach might not have worked. Developing that new carrier was critical. And what about the results? The report says they tested this in the lab, early stages, but promising. Mm, very promising, yes. It's important to stress, as the report does, this is lab-based work for now. They used donated white blood cells from people living with HIV cells known to contain these hidden reservoirs. And what happened when they treated these cells with the LNPX carrying the specific mRNA? They saw a significant effect. The mRNA delivered by LNPX successfully prompted the dormant virus within those cells to reactivate, to come out of hiding. How significant? The report quotes the lead researcher, Dr. Paula Saval. Yes, she described being overwhelmed by how big the difference was. That's quite a strong statement in science. Overwhelmed. Wow. Wow. That really suggests the effect was much larger than they might have even expected. The report said they repeated the experiments. Uh-huh. Which is standard practice. You always confirm your findings. But the emphasis suggests the results were strikingly positive, prompting that extra level of verification. When something works that well unexpectedly, you double and triple check. Right. And this work wasn't just an internal finding. It went through peer review and was published. Nature Communications. Yes. Publishing in a respected journal like Nature Communications means other experts in the field have vetted the methodology and the findings, adding credibility. Okay. Let's pause here and connect this back for you, the listener. We're talking mRNA, LNPs, LNPX, specific white blood cells. It sounds complex. Why does this lab work matter to you? Well, looking beyond the specific molecules, this represents a really tangible piece of progress in the global effort against HIV. It connects a technology mRNA delivery that many people are now familiar with thanks to COVID vaccines right. and shows it being applied to a completely different, long-standing challenge. It's using a known tool in a new, innovative way. It really highlights how science works, doesn't it? How breakthroughs in one area can suddenly open doors in another. That knowledge isn't siloed. Exactly. It demonstrates how fundamental understanding like how to get genetic material into cells effectively can be adapted and refined to potentially tackle problems that seemed incredibly difficult just a short time ago. Okay, so we've covered the hiding problem, the Australian team's innovative mRNA approach using the special LNPX delivery system and these really striking early lab results. It definitely sounds like progress. It's certainly moving the field forward, specifically addressing that core challenge of getting at the hidden virus. So let's just recap the big potential here based on this reporting. Sure. The main takeaway is this new method using this advanced mRNA delivery system, LNPX, shows promise in the lab for forcing hidden HIV out of its reservoirs. Which is a critical step needed if we're ever going to move beyond just controlling the virus towards actually eliminating it entirely. That's the hope. That's the potential long-term implication. Eradication, not just suppression. A huge potential shift. Mm -hmm. But, and it's a big but, the report is very clear. This is early days. Absolutely critical to remember. These exciting results are from lab experiments on isolated cells. That's step one. A very important step one, but still step one. The next steps, as the report mentions, are quite significant. Moving from cells in a dish. Two, testing in animal models. 
That's crucial to see how it works in a whole living organism, to check for safety, to see if it's effective beyond the lab bench. And only after successful animal studies would you even consider moving towards human clinical trials. Right, and human trials are complex, they take years, they involve rigorous safety testing first, then effectiveness studies in people living with HIV. So a lot of hurdles still to clear. Mm -hmm. While the science is exciting, a treatment based on this is not around the corner. No, definitely not. It represents real scientific progress and hope, but there's a long path of validation and testing ahead before it could potentially become a therapy for patients. Understood. Hmm. Potential is the key word. And interestingly, the report also touched on the idea that this LNPX technology might be useful beyond HIV. Yes, the researchers themselves noted that. The ability to efficiently deliver mRNA to specific, potentially hard-to-reach cell types. That's a powerful capability. And they specifically mentioned potential applications in treating certain types of cancer. That's right. Cancer is another area where targeted delivery of instructions, maybe instructions to kill cancer cells or to alert the immune system is a major focus. Developing better delivery platforms, like potentially LNPX, could have broad implications. So if this delivery system proves safe and effective, it might become a tool used for various diseases, not just HIV. It's certainly possible that's often how platform technologies evolve. You develop it for one purpose and then realize it can be adapted for many others. So bringing it back to you, the listener, one last time, the significance here isn't about a cure being available tomorrow, but it is about seeing real, tangible scientific progress against a challenge that has persisted for decades. It shows that researchers are finding clever new angles. It's a powerful reminder that innovation continues. Drawing on lessons learned, like from the pandemic response and applying them in new ways. Mm. It keeps pushing the boundaries of what we think is possible in medicine. It's genuinely hopeful. It really is. And just thinking about that connection, how technology developed so rapidly for one major crisis, the pandemic vaccines, might now unlock doors for tackling entirely different medical challenges like HIV, mm. maybe even cancer. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? It raises a fascinating question to leave you with, perhaps. What other hidden connections are out there? What other existing tools or knowledge may be developed for something completely unrelated are just waiting for science to look at them through a new lens and find unexpected solutions to long-standing problems?